It's the Excel dude coming at you again with 3D formulas today. And I brought my buddy Mike in here just so he could show us a little bit on how he feels when he uses a 3D formula. So how do you feel, Mike? Wow. It's like the king of pop. We go to our formulas here. 3D formulas are awesome. What they are is a great way to reference multiple areas in your spreadsheet. So let's say you have a tracking sheet here, and for whatever reason, we're looking at something like this. We need the average stats for these NBA players. We have their stats here, we have them here, here, and here, and we want a total. The only difference is we want to have something that'll be flexible. If we add another sheet in here, it's going to calculate it. So a 3D formula, instead of referencing just here, so this would be a two-dimensional, for example, it's going to the sheet James Harden, so it has the single quote, single quote, and then the exclamation mark, which tells it to go to the sheet James Harden, and then AD12, that'll be the cell, so AD12, AD12, right there, that's what that's going to display. And the same thing for Kawhi Leonard, AD10, and then AD13, and so on and so forth. And then Excel Dude, because we know he played in the league, he is also right here in AD13 and 27.2. Oddly, his stats are very similar to Russell Westbrook's. If I mean, I don't remember playing in the league, but I'm pretty sure if I did, I would, I'd have been up there, definitely, all sub six feet of me. But I digress. What we want to do is find something that's going to update. So right now, we have something that will average all of these cells. But what happens if we have another cell, or we want to calculate just everything in between a set of sandwich things? So we want this formula, let's say, to do the average of everything through these. So this is the three dimensions here. One dimension on this sheet, then we've got the third dimension. We're going basically through these referencing the same cells. That's where we're getting our three-dimensional. It factors in multiple different scenarios. So we're going to use a three-dimensional formula here and we'll get this answer. But what we have here, to use it as an example, let's say we want to sandwich James Harden and Russell Westbrook. So I'm using red as the color because they're both on the Rockets right now. Also, it's going to be a visual example for what we're sandwiching in between. It's going to capture Kawhi in there. It will not capture Excel Dude or any of these other ones. So we're going to reference the sheet just like we did in the other one. So we do the, so we want average. What's our function right there? We want James Harden. That's where we're going to start. So open the quotation mark. James, space. We have to be exact on this. Harden, colon, because that's the start of the reference. Then we're going to Russell Westbrook, and then we're going to close the parenthesis or the quotation mark, and add that exclamation mark. And the ra range we want for the averages will be their career. So we're going to go through AD2 through AD13. All we do is AD2 colon AD13. Close it, and there we are. So we have Russell Westbrook and James Harden. So it's pulling 82 through 8013 in here. It's pulling it in here. And it's pulling it in here. It's referencing through each of those dimensions. It is not capturing Excel dudes, though. So when you go to 3D formulas, and let's say we wanted to add Excel dude in there. We have the sheet. OK, but we don't want to go edit the formula. We don't want to type that in. Well, where's our sandwich start? Bookend on James Harden, bookend on Russell Westbrook. So we slide Excel Dude in here. We're going to move it in between anywhere between these two. So we'll put him right after Kawhi before Russell here. You're going to see this number increase. There you go, 22.8. Mm -hmm. Now when we pull it out, 22.6. You see? So that's the 3D reference. We're, de we're telling it what point in time to find the averages of those cells. So anywhere between here and here. So we could add 27 NBA players on different tabs here. This would still calculate the average in that exact range. So it reaches through all time and space for your 3D reference. Our final example here, one that's a little more practical, I think. We have projects. 
and we're tracking total cost, we're tracking total budget, and the total variance. So what we have right here, we're looking at three projects, A, B, and Z. A, B, and Z, the yellow ones. In those yellow projects, I'll just move this over here. In the yellow projects, we look at these cells. It's B1, B2, and B4. So project A, B1 is our cost, B2 is the budget, and B4 is the variance. And the same here, the same here, and the same here. So we go back here, project A, B, and Z. If we add that other project in here, so this is just referencing A through Z. This is a 3D formula. So it's the same displayed information right now. As you can see, the numbers are the same. But if we were to slide project D in there, so I used A to Z just again to show it could be project 1, project 10,000, and oh, let's add project 650 in there. Sure, we don't have to edit our formula one bit because we have our bookends, A and Z. Taking D, sliding it in, you'll see these numbers all change. These will stay the same because they're the static reference to A, B, and Z for the sheets. These will change because it's between A and Z, between here. So when we move this right in here, you'll see it move. And there you are. It picked up the difference. However, if we go to, let's make project D the cost zero. And we'll see this drop. We'll see these not change. These will all change. Zero. And there it is. Everything changed. So that's your 3D formulas intro right there. It's a great way to reference between here, here, and here. So if you have one sheet that tracks multiple other tabs, this is a great one to use. All right, see you next time.